Who would have thought that six months later we still talk about the war raging and closer to victory, whatever it means? I don't think this is uh, this is the case. Netanyahu, and, you know, six months into into this terrible, horrific war, when so many people are, 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 are killed, when Israel is isolated in the international community, when there is expectation of Iran response to the attack in, in Damascus, uh, the only thing I can do is to, to show some brave face and, and talk about victory. But at what price and what does it mean victory? Uh, the, most of Hamas leadership is still intact, uh, and, and Israel is deep in the, the quagmire of, of Gaza, and actually started taking troops, and only yesterday took a full brigade or division out of, of, of Gaza. So what's the next steps? And let's also remind ourselves, a victory would have meant to release the hostages, and from Israel point of view, and the hostages are not free, and what instead Israel managed to get here and there, sadly, tragically, some bodies back. Yeah, and to your point, as you say, there there are hostages that are, are not coming home alive, um, and there's not much evidence of how much inroads they've really made into Hamas, and that was always going to be an argument. To your point, they are withdrawing some troops from the south. Do you think that is a signal that they are slowing down, or are they just regrouping for this offensive in Rafa? Well, my reading of the situation is under pressure, especially from the United States for now, uh, the idea of encouraging Rafa uh, being sidelined. Because there is no way that, that there is a plan to enter into Rafa without causing more thousands of civilians killed. And the United States and the rest of the international community said enough is enough. Because where it all leads, uh, if Israel counts in terms of, of body bags, how many Hamas being killed, this is not a way to define, define a war. Defining a war is what are the political achievements. And right now, there are no political achievements, not in the region. Let's remind ourselves again on the verge of October 7. October 7 was a terrible atrocity by, by Hamas and Islamic Jihad. But... Israel entered into this war with more sense of rage and vengeance instead of strategic thinking. On the eve of, of October 7, there was talk about normalization with Saudi Arabia. This is now as remote as it could be. And, and peace with the Palestinians, it's again negotiation along this line, almost impossible to think about it, though we need to. So there is no, no political achievements on one end. But also entering Rafa, this is not going to achieve what they call destroy, destroying Hamas, because we are dealing not only with a military force, but with a political movement and ideological movement. And with them, you can also defeat them by presenting better political ideas, a better ideology. Yeah. To your point, um, the, the U.S. President Joe Biden seems to have made it very clear to the Israeli Prime Minister what might happen if he keeps pursuing this. Uh, it's hard to know, though, whether Netanyahu will take notice of this, to your point, not to go into Rafa, not to continue to cause a lot of collateral damage. Yeah, and, and he's already... You see, for Netanyahu, the main issue is to remain in power, also because of his corruption trial and already been threatened today, according to the Israeli newspaper, by one of his far-right, the most extreme of them, uh, Ben Gvir, that if Israel won't enter into Rafa, there is no reason for him to stay as prime minister. And these are exactly the forces that he wouldn't like to influence within Israel government. But without them, he might not have a government, which is the only reason for him, actually, to stay right in politics, when most Israel don't want him to be the prime minister. Now, saying that, I think the la last week conversation, phone conversation between Biden and, and Netanyahu showed that when the Washington wants to influence, the leverage its influence in Israel, it can. Immediately after the phone conversation, Israel allowed more humanitarian aid in, into Gaza uh, through, uh, through the, the, the crossing, the, la the land crossing. 
uh, Biden will, didn't shy away for the first time, at least in, in semi-public, to talk about the banning potentially certain 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 weaponry. So yes, I think for to a large extent also the cards are, are, are in Washington hands. Yeah, indeed. You know, I think after October 7th, and, and you, as you pointed out, this brutal, brutal attack by Hamas that has created almost an existential threat and crisis for many in Israel and, in fact, for many Jews around the world. Uh, has any of this gone any way to resolving that sense of being under attack? Yeah, the wars, as they do, show a lot of ugly sides of, of humanity, which is tragic. We saw it on, on, on October 7, we saw it in the, in the retaliation. We see it with, some, you know, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia. We see it some of the human rights organizations that, you know, the way they respond to the rape of, 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 of Israeli women and their ongoing torture. I think many will have to take stock after the war, I hope they will start already to think how they respond to all of it. But we are in this situation, and I think maybe maybe we are capable of learning from it and start moving right now in a different direction. We need more humanitarian help to go into Gaza. We need to see the hostages released. We need to start thinking about all the suffering in Gaza and, and different governance in, 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 in Gaza. You need leadership, which is different in Israel, in the, the, the PLO, and, and, and in Gaza. So I, I can just hope, not that I can <laughs> base it on, on, on much, that we, are, we will learn from this terrible, terrible tragedy in order that it would never happen again. Always good to get your thoughts and analysis. Thanks, Yossi. Thank you very much.